right, welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, special edition. Um, if you tuned in after Tuesday's game against the Washington Capitals, Razor and I talked at the end of our show about what we were hoping to do for the rest of the week as the Bruins get set to take on the Capitals in the playoffs, Razor, that begin on uh, Sunday night, um, Saturday night, beg your pardon. One of the things we talked about was at least one, if not two, interviews. Uh, and here's the first of two coming up. Uh, the first of, well, we hope to with the Bruins. For sure, this one, Stephen Camper, defenseman for the Bruins, is going to be joining us here. Such a valuable role that he plays for this team. Um, depth, veteran presence, and these guys are invaluable to a team, and they, they never get as much credit as they deserve. They never do. And what Steven's been able to do the last few years and, and being that seventh, eighth guy in the back end, coming in, stepping in, playing at a high level is invaluable for this organization. I, they're not unsung inside the dressing room. They're not unsung inside the coach's room or the GM's office. Uh, they can be overlooked by, by the outside, but they're, they're very important, very invaluable, especially come this time of year. And they're glue guys often. They are conduits oftentimes between coaches and players because just they're around a lot. They end up staying on the ice later usually, and they end up getting yeah. a lot of different kind of insight than, than maybe the regular player. And if they don't have the mentality, they don't stick around, right? If, if, right. if they if – they, it's, it's, an, it's a uh, – you, you better be that guy or else you're on your way out and on to somewhere else. And, and the Bruins, as an organization, rely on these guys, and, and Steven's one of those guys that they know they can count on. And he's so valuable that they put a letter on his sweater – for the game against the Washington Capitals when all the regulars were out there, and deservedly so. Yeah, and it means so, something. Uh, That's not taken lightly. It sure does. Yeah. yeah. So I look forward to talking to him. And I, I'm going to ask him later. I want to ask him in the interview, too, about how do you – how does he do it? And I know it sounds basic, but meaning it's not. It's anything but. So I look forward to uh, to hearing his answer on that. Uh, real quick, uh, you see this T-shirt I'm wearing? There's one for you, too, a different color, but it's called Toward Chaos. Uh, this is from – Guys that are first responders that are making affordable clothing for first responders as well. This is not a sponsorship. This is nothing like that. I'm wearing it because these guys were at uh, the Heroes Cup training camp, and they asked, and I said, absolutely. They're doing great stuff. So towardchaos.com, and they are offering Morning Brew listeners a percentage off. I think it's 10% off using Morning Brew at checkout. So first responders doing things for other first responders. Check them out. Thank you for the shirt. We'll get you yours when you get back in town. All right. Let's, uh, hey, Stephen Camper's getting ready to come in, so let's get to him right now. We wanted to uh, start, you know, we wanted to bring in somebody from the Ice Razor as we get the, the Bruins fans ready for the playoffs. And uh, this is a guy that I've known for years now. I don't know how many years, Stephen, we, that we've, we've known each other, but a long time, and I'm biased, admittedly so, with the Michigan man. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact that he played there as well. But, uh, Stephen, we re- first of all, we want to thank you for taking time after playing the Capitals on, uh, on Tuesday night to come in. But also really wanted to talk to you because I think, I, I mean, what you've done this year has been outstanding. I mean, the ability to play at the level you have coming in, coming out of the lineup, as, uh, as you have to, had, had to do this year, has been outstanding. So first of all, welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. Great to have you. How are you feeling this morning? Uh, well, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, good, tired. Um, you know, I got in late last night, but, uh, you know, wake up, it's another day, and put a smile on your face and, and get back to work. And it's playoff time. And and so how different does that feel? Like, we feel it. The fans sure feel it. How different is it for you right, you guys right now? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's a, it, you know, it's a season two, right? You're, you're, you're done with the regular season, I think. I think the last two months was just kind of a whirlwind because you're playing every other night and you played 28 games in 45 days that I think it kind of felt like playoffs anyway, because we were stuck behind the eight ball. We had that kind of the COVID outbreak with the team. So um, now it's just, you know, buckle up and get ready to go. And you, you play Washington. And, and I think the, the perk of that is, is we've played eight, all these teams eight times this year that we know, what the tendencies are that I don't know if necessarily the, the pre scout is going to be more, um, more in depth than what we've gone through the entire season. 
you touched on it quickly, it just how different it feels this year compared to prior years going into the playoffs. I'm curious, you know, you're talking to everybody up north, and it just it, it's not it's not quite the same. But I, I'm curious the the certain differences that you guys feel even this morning compared to what you would typically on on April 12th going into to playoff time after 82 games. Well, I think <clears throat> I think guys are just excited in general, just the you know, it, it's the, it's the best time of year, right? It's the, it's the, what, what fans call the free hockey, right? It's everybody's excited. Everybody gets to play um, and, and you're going for the Stanley cup and everybody's excited for it. Everybody wants to, you know, to lift it and, you know, to be in, engraved on it. So I think everybody wakes up this morning, kind of rejuvenized. Everybody's you put that, you put the regular season behind you and, and it's a new step going forward and, and we're going to be ready come Saturday night. I want you to, this is kind of not a two-part question, but it involves both you personally and the team. Do you think it's been more difficult, Steve, mentally or physically this year? I guess start with the team first. Do you think it's the challenge has been bigger mentally or physically? And then for you personally, what has been harder? Um, I don't necessarily know if it, mentally, I think it's kind of everybody, you know, you, you realize that you're playing every other day. So it's kind of, it's almost that playoff mentality through the entire year. You're waking up, you have, practices or you got a maintenance day and then you're, you're playing a game. And then um, overall, I think you're just kind of, you, you have the same mindset of, all right, we're playing a game, but we're playing, you know, the Buffalo Sabres three times in a row, or you're playing Pittsburgh twice in a row. And so it kind of gives that, I guess the playoff feel of like you're playing two teams back to back that you're used to flying into, you know, Buffalo on a Tuesday and then you're playing the devils on Thursday and, the Islanders Friday and then the Rangers on Sunday. So it's you're, you're playing these teams back to back kind of gives you the, I guess the, the playoff atmosphere, but it also slows the season down for the guys because you can understand that uh, you're in the same city. You can, you, you're preparing for those teams, but I think, you know, to your second point, I think the, the mentally, I think it was more draining than anything because you're, you're playing every other night that you're trying to, you know, I guess, get ready for these teams, get ready for, you know, the Sidney Crosby's, the Ovechkin's, the, you know, the Barzell's that you're going to play. And, and you got to be ready because every night that, you know, you're playing the same guys and you got to get ready for their tendencies all the time. To that point, the mental side, and I assume the protocols and, and the, the, the rules that were needed to be followed added to that difficult mental side of it do you have you guys talked about the protocols relaxing in playoffs as a group have you guys talked about how that will be exciting for a lack of a better word just to just to have the reins off just a little bit come playoff time yes and no but we've <clears throat> we touched on i think that's the hardest part if i can go back to like the season the hardest part of the whole thing was in during the season, like we couldn't really gather as a team. We couldn't go out to dinner. You're, you're having team meals at the hotel and you're, you're back in your room and you know, you're basically on, on an Island. You're, you're isolating yourself because you know, you don't want to put your teammates at risk. So, you know, we didn't have the, the team dinners or going out to dinner with the guys. So that was tough. Um, but with the NHL, <clears throat> excuse me, relaxing the, the protocols, um, you have to have a certain number of guys get vaccinated. And I think right now we're pretty close to that, but we all have to get our second doses still. So we, we got our first doses in Buffalo when we were there. And then I think the second one um, we're supposed to get, I believe either next week or the after round one. Um, so then, then I believe it's another two weeks after that. So it's essentially round, by the time we get to round three, um, that's when, you know, the, it can kind of relax a little bit and guys can kind of mingle a little bit more and kind of go out and do things. But until then, it's, we're, we're still in the same boat that we've been in the whole season. You didn't decide, you, you for medical purposes and family purposes, to play in the bubble. We, we talked about that in the past. Um, now that you've been able to do this, have you, I, I don't remember, we haven't had a chance, you and I used to sit down and talk a lot in the locker room. Has your family been with you through this whole season, Steve? Have, have they been up or have they been gone? I know it was early part they were, sep you guys were separated, but did they ever move back at all? 
No, they um, <clears throat> they stayed in Florida the entire year. My my wife and son came up last week. They both well, my wife's fully vaccinated. My obviously the son's being almost two years old hasn't had the vaccination, but um, so she's fully vaccinated. So they came up, and I, so I think out of what the 118 days that we've had through the entire season, I think I've maybe seen them six days total. I mean, that's a, I mean, I guess, I guess that's a glorious thing about FaceTime, right? You can, you can kind of see them and, and talk, but it's not the same as, as being with them. But, um, at the time it was the, it, you know, for them to stay down there is the best thing. I mean, the, the rules and regulations in Florida are completely different than they are in Massachusetts. So, um, you know, they're down in Florida, they, they're at our house and, um, my son's godparents live next door to us. So they, they're over every day and, and he gets to kind of run around the whole backyard and, and pee outside and get tan and I'm envious of it. So, <laughs> um, hopefully I don't get tan for quite a while, but, um, it's a, it's, it's fun that they get to kind of be, I guess, a little bit more open and, and, and stay down there and be, um, you know, in, in warm weather and not really have to worry about it too much. So has that almost helped you in some ways? Because I would think um, to the uh, to the person outside looking in, Steve, it would be, oh, my gosh, is that tough? Is that brutal? And while I'm sure it has been tough and brutal, it almost sounds like it's a relief for you in some ways to know that your son in particular has been able to live, so to speak, like that. Well, my wife's a rock star with this whole thing, this whole season apart. She's, you know, she's kind of taking the reins and <clears throat> more or less been a single mom down in Florida and, and she's done an unbelievable job, um, you know, with him and, and making sure that, you know, day to day life goes, goes on. And, um, I, I think, you know, it, it is, but it isn't easy. Um, you know, I guess you kind of, you, you're used to being in your own, I guess, time frame of your planning your day around what you do and you're not going home and, you know, as much as much as you want to spend time with them and you want to play with them, it's like, okay, let's prepare for tomorrow. Let's let's be ready physically, mentally. You know, get your rest, get your, go eat food, um, things like that. Where, um, you know, if he's around, it's a little bit different timing. But um, I guess it's kind of back and forth. You know, you you want him around, but at the same time, it, it's been nice to I guess prepare a little bit. But I don't think I would. I, I think I would much rather have them around than than what we're going through right now good answer I, i'm sure your wife will never watch this but make sure that that's definitely the right answer My we'll wife. clip that answer and send it to the rock to stars her. definitely yeah. 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 <laughs> wives are the unsung hero they always are um, my wife's not listening so i'm not going to give her that credit but she was always a rock star too uh back to hockey now Pre preparing yourself now um where What's your focus personally? What's the focus of the team the next three days? It's a quick turnaround. Guys had an X, you know, some guys had an extra day. You didn't have the extra day. You played 24 minutes last night, which, again, makes you the, the morning a little bit harder to get out of bed, I assume. What's, what, what are you looking forward to the next few days, meetings, focus? Um, just kind of give everybody an idea what goes into – the two or three days before playoffs and how much video, how in depth teams really get on each other personally, individually, goaltenders, where to shoot. I mean, it's a, it's a big couple days, a lot to take in come playoff time. I think, um, you know, our coaches do a great job of, of preparing us, um, with video. Um, it's going to be one of those things, uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll come into the rink and it'll be, it'll be pretty much how we, we always come about it, come in, get ready for, for practice, but there'll be, I think they'll go through, it will be like training camp essentially in the, in the parts of, we go through a certain part of each team's video each day. So, um, I guess for everybody, it could be one day it's, it's their, their four check and their neutral zone. So then in practice, you kind <clears> of <throat> go and practice against it where then the next day it's their D zone and they're how they do their neutral zone. So then, you know, it might be doing a little bit of their mock version of their, their neutral zone or their breakout. So you kind of, you get in a little bit more in depth and then, then it turns into the, you know, there's their players of what's their tendency, where do they like to, to go to the net? Where do they like to shoot from? Um, and then we, we get into the power play and the penalty kill and, you know, Joe Sacco has been unbelievable on the penalty kill this year. So he'll, he'll break it down a little bit more than what he normally does. And 
Um, and then Butchie and Panda will do a, a job on the, on the power play of, of getting everything ready for that um, to make sure that we know where their, their PK is. And, um, and then you got goalie Bob, who always has a, an unbelievable presentation of the goalies. So um, I think that's probably everybody's favorite day is when he, he brings up the goalies and kind of starts going through them. Um, Get goalie Bob but, to the front of the room. You're going to have a laugh or two. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the best part is when goalie Bob gets going. I was actually I, I was asking him like 15 minutes ago when um, when the when his video was going to be. And he said he's still in the still in the works, so you know it's gonna be you <laughs> yeah. know it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just quickly to follow up on that and jump in, I know I, being a backup goalie at the end of my career uh, in Vancouver, getting ready for Vancouver, John Quick. I would I would mimic some of John Quick's uh, tendencies in where he would get on the ice for the power play guys. Um, you're uh, that guy in and out of the line. Will you have tendencies of uh, the penalty kill when the power play is on, you're that guy. You're, you're going out there for the power play, working like Brendan Dillon, working like Zidane O'Chara, where those guys are out on the ice. Well, we'll probably use Tenorti on that that side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah big boy. Um, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's well, pretty much it. Maybe they put you over on the flank like Ovi, right? Yeah, that's the, listen, you could I be got, the PK I got, helper. I got one like that this year. I told Pasta absolutely. I was <laughs> um, that's right but yeah no it's it, it's you're spot on we'll we'll definitely do a little bit like that to to make sure that um especially you know how they how they've been penalty killing how they you know they were in the eight or the well, i guess the seven games against us this year not counting last night because i think we don't even think we had a power play last night um but how their penalty kill reacts to us how they're um where guys come up to, uh, you know, Z's a little bit more aggressive this year. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of picked up on that uh, a couple games in where, you know, he kind of strikes up a little bit higher. And I think that that's just mm -hmm. Z knowing that he can be a little bit more aggressive on Marshy. So uh, it's kind of the cues for, for Marshy and Grizz to kind of, you know, play around with that. And, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go through all of that in the next what, two, two days before we play here in practice and, and make sure that on, um, on Saturday night at, you know, well, it's, they say it's 7.15 on NBC, so 7.45 start. Um, <laughs> yes. We'll be ready to go. Yes, it's a double pregame meal for broadcasters because you're like, you eat up right away, and all of a sudden you still got all that time of NBC. You go get another meal. That's why we're all overweight. Not Razor yet. He hasn't been doing it long enough. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to take us onto the ice because I want to know, you bring up a guy like Ovechkin. You know, they've got some big bodies on that team, and I know the physical aspect element of the game is going to be brought up. Um, and I think, by the way, if you guys don't chase the physical play but just play it, I think you guys will be great against them. I, I, I really do. Just my little analysis. But I want to know what it's like for an NHL defenseman to go against a guy like Alexander Ovechkin. And because we're going to see him a ton now in the next – could be up towards of, of 10 days to two weeks. What, what's it like for you? What's it like for your, your brethren, your defensemen, to going up against him? <clears throat> um, I mean, always, obviously, you know, he's a hall of famer. He's a world-class player. I think, um, when Ovi is very good off his, on his offside, obviously, you know, he plays a left wing, but, um, like I, I mentioned to you guys before he, you know, he pulls up and he tries to shoot all the time and, um, or he does the, the in between the legs move. I think mm -hmm. you, you pick up on tendencies from watching him for so long. I mean, he's been in the, year, in the league for 15, 16 years now that I think all of us have seen him and how we play, but you realize that he is an elite player. You understand that Nicholas Backstrom is an elite passer and he's going to look for him. So I don't think you just look at Alexander Ovechkin and how you play him. I think you look at that line of how do we play this line? Because you got to be tighter in your gaps. You got to be tighter in D zone coverage. You have to, when there's a loose puck, you have to get to it or at least, tie the guy when he gets there and make sure that you have support around the zone because they are very good at spreading guys out and they did it last night to us they they spread it out and they like to kind of move it around the perimeter and kind of look for the pass and then um <clears throat> another really good thing they're good at is is getting sticks on pucks in front of the net they're they're a very good tipping team um you always know, saw that in the, the game at the garden when they beat us eight to eight to one they, they had three goals that they tipped in so um there's aspects of all of them that you have to 
to realize that you have to, you know, know what they're going to do, but you also at the same time, know what their line mates are going to do with them. Um, and, and I think that that's part of the, the prep that we're going to have going into the next couple of days here is, is knowing what these guys do. And um, I don't think the lines that we saw last night are going to be the same lines that are going to play on Saturday. I think they're going to, there's going to be different lines that, you know, you're going to have to be prepared for that are going to change throughout the, the course of the series. And it's like anybody else, the, the lineups and the matchups change, but it's, it's knowing that any of the six defensemen that are out there can play against those guys and, and knowing that they're going to do a job. What's it like um, changing when a different goaltender comes in for you? I, I've always wanted, and I've talked to D-men about learning signals and signs from, you know, you've known Tuca for a long time now, Steve. You've played with him. You understand what he, what his, you know, I guess his touch points or his, or his, you know, where he looks for you on the break on stuff. When a new kid like a Swayman comes in, how much work needs to be done by the defenseman too to get to know that guy? Um, you know, Swayman's got a lot of swagger. He, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very fun to see, uh, you know, a young kid have that much swagger coming into the league. So, you know, good for him and good for you know, the his his mental preparation to come in and do the job that he's done. Um, as for that, I think it, it takes games. It takes, you don't learn that stuff in practice because practice is, um, it's just, you're, you know, you're, you're, when you're looking at a goalie, you're not really paying attention because you're trying to do what you're doing in practice to make sure that you're ready for a game. So you're not really paying attention to it. Um, but it's morning skates. You're watching them and how does he handle a puck? Um, where does he like playing it to? How, like, and, and I think that a lot of that comes in, like I said, in games. And I, I think the things that we've learned is, is Sway, Sway will battle for a lot of, uh, you know, Sway will battle on pucks. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's more or less coming over time to, um, to understand. But I think we've all realized what he's really good at and what I guess his limitations are if he's going to come out and play it. Um, you know, where, you know, you could go back on Tuca three years ago. Tuca wasn't that great of a puck handler. Couldn't, didn't really pass the puck that well. And now you look at him three years later and he's making 60 foot passes. So it's, it's one of those things where you're not, you know, I think that those things can get built in, but um, it's, it's, you develop that over time and, and, and watching them in, in games. Yeah, getting to your spots, you know, with a guy, that doesn't play well he's just going to rim it up around the boards you don't have to get to that corner spot the outlet things like that right i, I was that guy just get out there and rip it around the boards and let the <laughs> wingers take care of it <laughs> and forget the 15 foot pass to my d-man uh, the the playoffs now coming up what's the the mindset of the team and and we saw the trade. We saw you talked about COVID and just have, having to go through that for the three or four weeks and what a grind that was for everybody on the team. Did the trade deadline give everybody some momentum or did you feel that coming anyways? I, I think guys look in. Like, I, I feel like anybody that says they don't pay attention to it lies because we yeah. all do we all pay attention to it I, I think everybody looks over their shoulder if something's gonna happen um you know i think sweens did an unbelievable job and going on getting taylor hall i think he's fit in very well i think the underrated player in the whole thing is curtis lazar how he's balanced out the fourth line um mike riley an unbelievable puck moving defenseman i think you know he's a guy that i don't think anybody really thought of um and he's come in, he's done an unbelievable job for us. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, Sweens went out and, and looked of upgrading the team and he, and he definitely did. I think, you know, you look at, you look at how David Krejci's played with, with Taylor Hall and, and Craig Smith, like that line is unbelievable right now. And they, and they, they look great. They got a ton of chemistry and, um, you know, Lazar's kind of helped us with the PK and, and being the fourth line rock. And, and then you got Riley who can step in on the first unit and, and play on the power play and play on the penalty kill. And he just gives us that weapon of, you know, another guy come, you know, on the transition that's going to, you know, make this team better. How have you been able to become so successful, Steve, at going from out of the lineup 
at times for a long stretch. And I, I understand the obvious answers. I'm just always prepared. But it can't be that easy, bud. Especially, like, you know what I mean? It can't be. So It's, it's not. It's really not. Um, it's easy to say, like, oh, you, you practice, you know, practice like it's a game. But I, I, I'll be honest. Not possible. It's, 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 you know, there's, there's times where you don't play for 10, 15 games. And every day is just, it, it feels like Groundhog's Day. You're coming to the rink and you're, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to get bags heated today. Um, but here's the thing, like your teammate, like the coaches are going to put the best lineup in the, on the ice, right? You're happy for your teammates because you want them to do well. You want them to play. Like it's not their choice that you're not playing. Like, you know, the coach is putting the best team on the ice. So it's like, okay, you know what? So what am I going to do that? Like, how, what's my mentality for tomorrow or that day? Like, okay, well, I'm just going to go get better at what I do. I'm going to go what, and, and I'm going to go hone my skills to make sure that I'm getting better. I'm going to go work on the things that I don't do well. So then the next time I step in, it looks seamless. Like, and, and honestly, I think, you know, the, the main thing for me is I just enjoy the game. I love hockey. I love playing uh, in the NHL. I love playing here. And I don't want to let my teammates down when I step into a game. So what I tell myself is like, okay, if a mistake happens, it happens. Like I can't go in the past and change it, but I'm going to know that the next time I go out there, I'm just going to work just as hard because I want to, I want to be the player that my teammates can rely on knowing that, all right, well, he hasn't played in 15 games here. He's going to step in and they know what they're going to get from me. And I think, you know, that was a conversation I had with, with Sweens probably two years ago. And he told me, he was like, be it the most predictable player you can be when you come in, that your teammates know what you're going to do. He's like, there's nothing harder than a guy who comes in and your teammates don't know what's going to happen because then they don't know how to play. He's like, if you just make the easy plays, he's like, it makes it so much easier for those guys. And I took that to heart and I was like, okay, listen, I'm going to be the guy that's stepping in playing, you know, 20 games a year. So it's like, how do I make myself, the best player at those 20 games is by stepping in, making myself very dependable and know that my teammates know what they're going to get from me on the night in the night out basis. Uh, I'm going to lead you a little bit here. I know the answer, but uh, you've played on a couple different teams, a couple different organizations, and I did as well. And I played on teams that being the extra guy, it was easier because the teammates are so great. And they're very, they keep you a part of it. Nothing, it. The hardest part about not being in that lineup is the morning and feeling like you're not part of it. And, and there's some teams, there's some groups that, that don't include those guys. I assume, and I, and I know Patrice, I know the older guys, that they include everybody all the time. So I just, uh, does the, I know that makes it easier. So again, I'm leading you a little bit. I know what your answer is going to be, but just touch on that a little bit, how important that is. Cause I can say it, but you're actually doing it right now that how important it is to have those guys making everybody, not just you, but everybody from the, the 19 year old kid to the, the 37 year old guy, uh, a part of the team and part of the organization. Well, it's, it's huge. I think, you know, you touched on a Bergy. I think when Z was here, he did the same thing. Um, it's been that culture for a long time, even when I was here before, you know, it, it's a very inviting locker room. It's a very tight knit locker room where it doesn't matter if you're Brad Marchand, David Posternock, or you're myself, Greg McKegg, Anton Bleed, Carson Kuhlman that are getting spotted in. Everybody feels like they're a part of it. Everybody feels like they're, they're involved. Everybody has a say when it comes down to, to things that are going on. And and that's just the, the, the culture that these guys have built over, over the years. And it's truly special. And I think, you know, the guys enjoy it because they, like you said, they do feel involved. They do feel like, all right, well, Hey, listen, like I'm not playing. It, it's, you know, it's one, it, it's tough. Like everybody wants to play, but you all feel involved. And I think the one thing that I guess like, I might go rogue here for a second, but like the, the one thing that I, I I've taken to heart is like guys like Matt Grizzly, Charlie McAvoy, Brandon Carlo, will all come up to me after a game and be like, what did you see here? What did you mm -hmm. see at this point of the game for me? Where like, 
it's not necessarily the coaches telling them what they see. You're asking your peer of like, okay, tell me I didn't see something wrong here. Tell me I, I'm like, what did you see? And then we they can trust have that you. conversation. Yeah. They you, trust can, you. you can have that, com- you can have that conversation with them. And I think that that not only because like you can go around the league and guys that play a lot, they, they just get disinterested from watching hockey games. But I've always been one of those guys. I enjoy watching hockey. I, my wife probably hates me because of we're at home. I'll turn on a <laughs> hockey game. I just, there's, there's certain things I, I like, I enjoy watching games. So I enjoy watching guys. I enjoy watching like games happen. So it's like, like when those guys bring up questions to me, whether it's the night of the game or the next morning, I can have those conversations with them because I did watch your game. I know what you did. And it's one of those things of like, I want you to be the best player that you can be because that means we're going to be the best team that we can possibly be. And it's not like, well, I didn't, you know, guys can sit there and be like, ah, you know, I didn't really pay attention, but it's like, no, cause I genuinely care about all of you. I want you guys all to go on and have great careers. And I want you guys all to do great, but I want the team to win when it comes. Well, that's down not to normal. It. Everybody listening that that doesn't happen. That a, a guy, Charlie McAvoy playing 24 minutes, asking someone who didn't play what, what they saw. That's, that's different. Yeah, it's it is different. Do you do you think that you'd like to be a coach? Because I'm hearing coach stuff out of you, Cam. I'm I'm hearing I love watching hockey. I like team success. I like being around the game. I want to make myself your wife better. might be listening. Your wife might be listening. Don't yeah, forget. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, just, you, you feel like I, that's I, something that could interest you. It, it could. It could. I you know my agent and I have talked about it. You know, I'm I'm getting old. I'm 32 years old. I get it. Like hockey life is very short for everybody that un- doesn't understand that. Like if you, you make it past 28, 29 years old, you, you've had a long career. So it's kind of one of those things where, um, I'm not done by any means. I, you know, I think I have a lot of hockey left, but, um, I've definitely thought of it. I, I, you know, I've, I don't know if I'd want, I don't, I, I don't know if necessarily if I'd want to step right into coaching. I think I'd, I would want some time away from the game to kind of, I guess really understand if that's what the route mm-hmm. I want to go, but I, I do want to coach. Um, all right. I, I do want to possibly think of coaching at some point, but I also want to, you know, after this year away from my son, I want to be, I want to be home for a little bit. I want to spend some time with them before I, before any decisions are made about that. Uh, I asked you about going against Ovechkin as we're getting close, just a couple of more with you here. This, it's been just a ton of fun and, and we've been wanting to have you on for a while. Come over the top here any second. <laughs> tell tell Trav we're just pacing <laughs> around back there. No, he's, he's gone. He's, he's out doing something different. <laughs> so um, you only have had to go against you as a team and you personally a couple of times against the Caps this year, but, but what's it like going against, 63 you brought up brad marchand's name and i i said i gotta ask him what it's like going against him every day in practice because i'll come to some practices when i can non-covid year i'm there as much as i can part of our gig all that stuff guy works his ass off he works his ass off in practice and it's not it's cliche you know your best players have to be your hardest workers it's true here he does but what and he's also brad marchand so what's it like for you going against them all the time well to touch on that, I think that fans don't realize how hard Fergie, Marshy, and Pasta work in practice. If they mess up a drill, they are rattled. <laughs> and I think that everybody needs to know that, that like they are – the reason why they're so good is because of how hard they work in practice, because of how hard they prepare themselves for games, because they – and. and you know, you could throw everybody in that mix, but those three in particular, like Bergie and Marshy, if I have to go on them a two on one, I am celebrating if I stop them because it's like they are so good at it. Um, it it's funny because, you know, Razor, like you said, I, I've played on numerous teams and, and you play against Marshy and he's that guy that every other fan base hates him. Every other person on any team hates him, but then like, I'll go there and they'll be like, what do you think of Brad Marchand? I'm like, he's a guy that you want on your team. Like he's like, he's the, like he's, he's the X factor, right? Like he can, he can take over a game. He can, he can play chippy. He can put the, put pucks in the net. He can make plays. He, he's an all around player. And I think 
you know, we're very fortunate to have him. We're very fortunate that he's had an unbelievable season like he's had. Um, but it, it's one of those things, like, when he comes to practice, he he puts his head down, he goes to work. He, you know, for the fans out there, I, I know that this year's a little bit different, but, like, at practice, if you ever pay attention to, to the beginning of practice, he's one of the first guys out there mm-hmm. shooting pucks. He, he's working on a shot, working on, like, small little plays that he knows that he's going to have to make that night going into a game or or coming up like a little a small little move and he works on it through the entire practice and and those are the little things that I don't think people really take into account is he'll go there and he'll make like a small little play and know that it's going to work maybe not the next night but it's going to work two nights later and and he just he he works so hard at the little details of his game and making sure that when he's out there it it's it's a hundred percent all the time. I I just, I'm mesmerized by stuff that he does and the others too, but in particular, the, the ability for him and his size to get inside, as you say, to do these things, it's, I am, I'm so impressed. It's, it's, it, I call he's the world's best left wing. That's not saying that Ovechkin isn't great and dynamic, but nobody touches the game from a left winger's perspective more right now than Brad Marchand between PK power play, the five on five, the end of the period, you know, defensive guy being out there with along with Bergeron. It's, it's impressive. It's, he it's, plays it's in every re- situation, which is amazing. Cause like you look at a lot of these guys that are playing in, you know, for a lot of teams and, and a lot of guys don't, a lot of top line guys don't penalty kill. Mm-hmm. And he's the first one jumping over the boards from the first PK him and Berge. First PP, yep. Starting starting eighty five percent of our games, like they're playing eighteen to twenty minutes a night, like. So it it goes into you know how much preparation he does, but how hard he works. That he is, I mean, you guys remember eleven years ago he broke into the league on the fourth <laughs> line with right. with Dan Paye and and Gregory Campbell and Sean Thornton, yeah. And he was penalty killing. That's how he made it into the league, and then it slowly evolved into him you know, learning from, if you talk to him, he, he learns from Nathan McKinnon and Sidney Crosby when he goes back to, to Nova Scotia in the summer and he, and he practices, he watches things that guys do and he wants to incorporate that in their game. And he's a very studious player. And, and I don't think that that gets talked about enough that he watches what guys do on the ice and, and, and through the game to know that he can build that into his game. Because like you said, he, he's one of the best left wingers in the game could possibly go down as one of the best left wingers to ever play because of, you know, he, he plays a full 60 minute game and, and he is one of the better players in the league. All right. As we wrap it up with you here at camp, uh, I want to ask you just a few questions, uh, kind of off ice stuff just to get to know you a little more. Some of the fans might not know. And then we'll, we'll say thank you for joining us here on morning brew with Jaffe and razor. You've spent what five, six years of your nine going on 10 year career with the Boston Bruins, right? In the NHL, you've played, you've played hundreds of games in the American league as well, but just talking, focusing on the NHL. What's been your favorite part of Boston, uh, off ice in your, in your Ooh. times here? That's tough. Um, God, I mean, I'm going to go back to the fat kid. I mean, I like Mike's pastries. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, you know, I, I like I like strolling around the North End um, a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, with that, I'm a history guy, too. So, you know, just kind of walking around Boston, kind of seeing the, the buildings and um, everything like that. But um, I, I mean, if I have to say probably my favorite part of Boston, I mean, Boston will always be with myself, and my family. My son was born here, so. We'll always kind of have that that Boston home, you know, because he gets to say that he was born in Boston, Mass. When he goes to sign up for USA Hockey, it's not going to say, you know, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's going to say Boston, Massachusetts. So it's going to look a little bit better for the hockey aspect of it. You're a, a Michigan guy, um, as they said, near and dear in the open, uh, Ann Arbor guy and everything. But uh, have you become, have you started to become to enjoy another Boston pro sports team? Or are you still all Detroit? Oh, I'm not Detroit at all, at all. I, w- oh. I, I was never I – w- I, I used to be a Tigers fan. Um, you know what? My wife is from Seattle, so I think she's kind of manipulated me to be a Seattle Seahawks fan. Um, but I, I've – my one of my best friends played for the Red Sox for a couple of years. Um, 
So I, I like the Red Sox. I like going to Fenway. I like watching baseball. Um, but it's all, it's always been, uh, I guess, foot, I guess pro football is really tough for me because everybody plays in these fantasy football leagues, right? So you start to, you start to sit there and cheer for your players, not the team. So I think I've lost kind of like the whole team aspect of it where I, I don't really have a team. I'm like, I'm cheering uh, for my player. And then like, if I'm sitting there with my neighbor and he's got a guy going against me, that's on Seattle. I'm like, I hope he loses right now. <laughs> that's the GM coaching you. That's, there that's you the go. GM coaching you. There you go. That's awesome. Hey, listen, man, we love you. We, we love having you. Thanks for taking time with us. Uh, I know the Bruins are busy today. I think Trav's got to get the computer back now, too. So we thank him. We thank you. Great stuff. Been wanting to have you for a while. Good luck in the playoffs. I hope we get to talk with you again soon. Okay, bud? Yeah, great awesome. season. Thanks, guys. Good luck. All right, buddy. Enjoy Thanks, goalie blob. Oh, I will. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.